Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Ask FUH. We have with us Dr. Gagan Sabrawal, who is our specialist in oral and maxillofacial surgery at the FUH Surgical Institute. And uh, today we will discuss a couple of questions that we have received from all of you regarding the oral and maxillofacial surgery. So to begin with, Dr. Gagan, let's begin with the basics. What is uh, maxillofacial surgery? So uh, maxillofacial surgery is the only surgical branch of uh, dentistry. As you know, dentistry has seven branches. This is one of the surgical branch. Uh, this branch includes starting from basic, you know, complex wisdom tooth surgeries, dental implants, um, you know, people who have tumors and cysts in the jaw, also uh, people with uh, joint disorders and joint pains, um, and uh, you know, orthognathic surgery, which is which relates to surgery of the jaw. Um, reconstruction of the upper and lower jaw and also uh, you know children which are born with cleft lip palate and facial deformities so we treat those with different kind of modalities and also uh, road traffic accidents people who have uh, uh, fractured bones of the face, facial skeleton we treat those as well so you mentioned that we do dental implants and so who would be the right uh, candidate who needs the dental implants? Basically dental implant is a titanium post that we put in the jawbone which can support a tooth or a bridge or multiple teeth. When it comes to an individual, uh, all individuals who are healthy, uh, who have no core morbid conditions, medical condition like controlled diabetes uh, and if they are hypertensive it is controlled hypertension, uh, if they are on blood thinners if they are able to stop their blood thinners or maybe it can reduce the dose of blood thinners. Most of the people who are medically fit can get an dental implant. Now there are ways in which some people have less bone, some people have more bone. That can be you know, uh, clinically judged by, uh, we have a 3D CT scan in the hospital and uh, we can judge the bone with that and I feel there is no individual if he is medically fit who cannot get an implant. Are the implants very painful? Uh, no, implants are precise. I tell all my patients that extractions are more painful than implants. Because when you are extracting a tooth, uh, the bone has to expand. But when you are doing a dental implant, uh, we have precise drills. Uh, we have actual calibrated drills and we drill those at a particular RPM uh, so that it is uh, totally painless. And some patients don't even need to have painkillers after the procedure. So that we can attribute as the advancement in technology that we have? Uh, yes, it's as been refined over the years. Uh, the drills have refined over the years, the procedure has refined over the years. And actually the, the implant per se has been developed over the years to you know be totally non-traumatic. And the acceptance rate has become really high because of the surfaces that these companies are providing these days. And of course the surgeon's expertise. Oh, yeah, I would say that too. <laughs> So, uh, and I think vis-a-vis -vis people always uh, have and there is this question about wisdom tooth removal. So how painful is a wisdom tooth removal surgery? So with my experience, uh, wisdom tooth done at an early age, like the eruption time of a wisdom tooth is between 18 to 25 years. And during that time, if there is an issue with wisdom tooth and we remove it, it's like a day, you have pain discomfort. During the procedure, you don't feel anything because obviously the type of anesthesia that we give these days is, is a lot better than what it was 10-15 years ago. Uh, also when it comes to you know people who are older, there are some people who are very scared of getting their wisdom tooth removed and they wait for a very long time, couple of years. So the only disadvantage they have is that their, their healing period is a little delayed than, than people who get it done when they have pain for the first time or the second time. But there are some people who keep having pain years and years and years and they're so scared that they don't want to get it done. And eventually one day when they come to you with pain that has not gone for a week. So, so those people, the healing period goes on for a little longer than normal. But pain during the procedure is hardly any pain. And who should actually, like uh, whether one should wait for the wisdom to, to come out or uh, who should opt for the tooth removal? See, uh, the, the best time to to a wisdom tooth surgery is in your early 20s 
um, obviously we can just take a regular x-ray and if we see the position of the wisdom tooth is at an angle it's better to get it removed then rather than wait for it because that tooth will never erupt and it will only trouble you for the rest of your life and it does impact the other uh, organs as well right the eyes uh, not exactly headaches. it doesn't what the only disadvantage that it, ha- it occurs is that most of the kids have braces when they are 12 13 14 uh, when the wisdom tooth starts erupting depending upon the size of the jaw there are times when the teeth starts getting pushed and they risk overlapping at an older age because of the wisdom tooth so for that reason also they feel that if the position of the wisdom tooth is not right it's better to remove so can uh, there's a question can i do extraction and implant at the same time yes we can and uh, i have been doing immediate implants with extraction for the last 15 years now and with very good success rate there is no difference clinically uh, and statistically between implant placed delayed like after three months of extraction and implant placed at the same time during extraction the most important thing is that in one surgery you are done with the extraction you are done with the implant and you're done with the surgical aspect of the implant so there's slight pain discomfort antibiotics everything just once and then when you come after three to six months we just take the measurement and give you the crown so that is the major advantage and it can be easily done in most of the cases but that definitely makes it look easier and less painful it is actually less yeah. painful yeah it, it is actually less painful what people uh, make it sound because they feel that you know you're putting a screw inside the jaw yes it has to be painful it's not like that yeah you definitely released my fear of dentists <laughs> thank you there's a question which talks about uh, what is the treatment of jaw clicking and pain so it is very common unfortunately and at FUH, I, every week I see five to seven new patients, especially with TM joint pain. And a few have been referred by ENT because that's the first thing that you realize when you have pain, it's next to the ear, so you go to the ENT. Um, jaw clicking is multifactorial, it's not because of one thing. The best modality to check what is the cause is actually an MRI. So, after that, you know, there is custom-made treatments for patients, um, different modalities that can offer, but we need to know the cause of why it is happening. And is it, is it hereditary or it's just the way the it's, jaws... It's, that's what I said, it's multifactorial, it depends upon your bite, could be a trauma at a very young age because of which there is a misalignment of the... or you know genetic conditions where the the muscles are can be overstressed and which causes the disc in between uh, the the joint to overstretch sometimes uh, it's age related as well um, because of arthritis in the joints like in any other joint so this is also a joint like mm. people don't consider this as a joint unfortunately yeah. because they feel how can there be a joint in the face uh, because most of the joint people know about is either a hip or a knee, knee. so this joint is not very popular but this is yeah. still a joint a uh, person asking i have got braces and i'm not able to bite properly still after the braces so do i need surgery so yes we can do surgery but obviously i'll have to check that person clinically first uh, there are times when uh, people have braces but they don't wear their retainers so the teeth get misaligned again some people have issues with their jaw rather than the teeth so when it is an issue with the jaw, we can actually realign the jaw by surgery. It's called orthokinetic surgery and that's what we specialize in. So we can move your jaw back and forward and back uh, depending upon what the discrepancy is between your teeth. But for that, yes, uh, we need to check you clinically first before I can give you a definite answer that are you the right candidate for surgery or with just with braces we can fix it. And there's another one which talks about the cleft lip palate that you mentioned at the beginning. So what age should the cleft lip uh, palate be treated? So uh, so clefts come in varied uh, shapes and sizes like it could be a unilateral cleft from one side, isolated just the lip, uh, it can be uh, a bilateral on both sides 
cleft can be associated with the lip and a palate and also it can be associated with the lip palate and an alveolus which is the area of the where we have the teeth that's the alveolus so if it's a complete cleft lip palate and alveolus the first surgery is done at the age of 3 months which is the cleft lip then the palate can be done bit anywhere between 10 to 1 year of age and then we need to do another surgery at the age of 7 where we put a bone graft to reconstruct the the missing jaw in the middle which supports a tooth so these are the basic three surgeries but if the kid just has a cleft lip it's the three months of age and they can lead a very normal life after that and uh, so basically anybody can get the cleft lip uh, palate surgery done or there is a no uh, so the age of the child is first then obviously the child should be um, medically fit to undergo anesthesia because a 3 month old child has a, a lot uh, of variation between hemodynamics during surgery as an adult so and also the body weight we say that it should be minimum 5 kg and a healthy individual with uh, you know no coughing sneezing like kids have and uh, medically fit and obviously we get them checked by anesthesia and pediatrician before we take them for surgery so if they approve the the child for surgery and they say that it's medically fit then they can go ahead and do the surgery all right thank you dr gavin for uh, such an insightful uh, q&a today i hope uh, our audience got all their answers and if you'd like to know more from dr gagan you can visit our website on fhs surgical institute you'll find dr gagan under the dentistry department and you can send your questions to us on our social media thank you thank you